Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at a simple machine code program. Well, actually a basic program that we can use to load a machine code program into our computer and execute it. And it's going to be kind of fun because it's a very quick and easy way for us to be introduced into Z80 assembly language and machine code, because although we're not going to be assembling a program today, we are going to be taking a look at the assembly language instruction in our basic loader program. So it's a quite easy introduction to machine code. Obviously it's not a very in-depth or comprehensive instruction, but it is a fun way to get introduced to machine code and we can do it in just a few minutes. So if you're interested in learning machine code, Z80 assembly language, and you want a very quick and dirty kind of way, well, it's not that dirty and <laughs> it's pretty clean, but it's a, it's a fun way to get introduced to Z80 assembly language and machine code. So you can use this as a jumping off point to continue your journey in learning machine code and Z80 assembly language. So if that sounds good to you, and why wouldn't it? Let's take a look. So if we take a look on my screen here, we'll just go through the program line by line, and we'll see it's quite simple to create our first machine code program manually. And let's take a look here. So first of all, what I want to do is introduce you to the bottom of the program. So let's take a look at this section here, starting at line 9000. And just in case you're not familiar, I've typed this program into the Visual Studio Code Editor, uh, as I described in a previous video, how to set up this development environment. Of course, you can just go ahead and type this uh, program into the computer directly. If you have a Sinclair Spectrum computer or a ZX Spectrum Next computer, you can just type this in by hand if you want. And I'll also upload this program to my SpriteWorks Facebook group for my Patreon subscribers. You can download it there if you like. So first let's take a look at the end of this program where I have some data statements. Now these data statements are going to hold our actually assembly language and machine code program. Although we're not actually assembling a program, I am using the data statements to store the assembly language instructions as I'll explain to you right now. So if we take a look at the first one here, you can see line 9000 is just a rem statement that indicates that this is where we're storing our machine code program. And let's take a look at our first data statement in line 9001. It says data, and then our first data element is a string, which is the assembly language instruction. Now this instruction is not going to be assembled, of course, it's just a string, and it's used for display purposes later, as you'll see when I actually run the program. So the first element in each data statement in my program is just a string that shows what the Z80 assembly language instruction is. In this case, in line 9001, the assembly language instruction is LDA comma two. And then let's take a look at the following elements in this data statement. So the next element I have here is the number two, and this indicates how many bytes are in this particular assembly language instruction. And in order to figure that out, uh, you can look it up online or look in a book and see how many bytes are in the particular assembly language instructions you want to include in your program. So in this case, my instruction LDA comma two uh, will be a two byte instruction. So I followed that with the number two, which my program will be using as you'll see in a moment. And then following that, I have the actual bytes of data, which make up the machine code bytes for this assembly language instruction. So in this case, the LDA comma two assembly language Z80 instruction converts into these two bytes of data, 62 and two. And then I have a rem statement that indicates what this instruction will do. So what this program actually is going to do is going to simply change the border color on the screen. And in our first line, it says load border color red into the register A. So if you're not familiar with assembly language, uh, Z80 assembly language, that's what this load instruction does. Load A comma two loads the value two into the A register, which is also the accumulator. Now let's take a look at the next data statement, which will be our next assembly language instruction, which is out 254 comma A. And this is the instruction that actually changes the border color. And so the data that follows it in this case is two, because this instruction takes two bytes of data as well, which are followed here 211 and 254. So those are the machine code uh, instructions that make up this assembly language instruction out 254 comma A. And then you can see the rem statement says set border to color stored in register A. So in the previous line, we stored a value of two into the A register. And now we're going to use that value in the A register to set the border color. So the border color will change to the value of two 
which should be red. And then finally, in our last data statement, we have a return string, meaning that this instruction is the return instruction. And following that, we have the number one, which indicates that this return instruction only takes a single byte of data in machine code. And then finally, we have the actual code for this return instruction, which is 201. And all these values are in decimal. And then finally, my rem statement has a comment that says return to basic. So when our machine code program has finished executing, this return instruction will return control of the computer, in this case, back to basic. All right, now let's go up and take a look at the basic program starting at the beginning to see how we're going to actually convert this assembly language program into machine code and load it into memory and then execute it. So here at line 10, we have a rem instruction that has a comment that just says a simple basic program to save and execute a machine code program in memory. So that's what this program does. And now in our next line, we have line 20, restore 9000. So as you probably know, restore just refreshes the data in a data statement. And our data statements begin here at line 9000. So this line 20 here will just refresh the data at line 9000. And then line 30, we have a CLS instruction, which is a clear screen instruction in basic, which will clear the screen, as it says here in the comment, clear the display. And then we're going to print this line of text that says, press a key to load MC program, which is the machine code program. And then the next line 50 here is pause zero, which just waits for the user to press a key. And then, so what we want to do next is load the machine code bytes into memory. But before we do that, we have to tell the computer where we want to store these bytes in memory. And that's what we do in this next line right here, line 60. It assigns a value to a numeric variable. In this case, the variable name is called memory. So memory is not a keyword, it's an actual variable name that I came up with. And so we're loading a value into that variable of 40,000. So the variable called memory will contain a value of 40,000, which will be the starting address where we're going to store our machine code bytes into memory. And our rem statement here says initialize memory variable. Memory is just the name of the variable to store address locations for machine code. So that's where we're going to store our machine code. All right, now let's get into the main uh, part of our program, which is going to do all the work for us, which is also the fun part of our program. And let's start here at line 100, where we have a read statement. And first we read I string. And the note here says, read Z80 assembly language instruction description. So that is this line of text here that we put in our data statements. In this case, the first one is LDA comma two. That is the string that's going to be read into this string variable, I string. And we're going to be using that actually right here in the next line to print it on the screen. It says print I string. Actually, it says print apostrophe I string. So the apostrophe will move down to the next line of the screen just to create some uh, blank space. And our note says here, print Z80 assembly language instruction. So when we print that I string, it's going to print that string of text that we put into our data statement, just to let us know what the assembly language instruction is that we're loading into memory. All right, now in line 120 here, we have another read statement that says read byte num. And the comment says, read number of machine code bytes for instruction. So that is the first number in our data statement, which in the first line is two. So that indicates how many bytes of data or how many bytes of code uh, is needed to execute this assembly language instruction when you convert it into machine code. So in this case, our first instruction requires two bytes of code and we're loading that value or reading that value into this numeric variable called byte num. And that's gonna keep track of how many bytes of code are required for this particular assembly language instruction. And then in the following line, we simply print that onto the screen. So we print this word bytes, which is going to tell us how many bytes our assembly language instruction uses in machine code. And then we simply print that byte num variable, which is the number of bytes. So now in our next line, line 140 here, where you can see it says for f equals one to byte num. So we're setting up a loop counter that will count up to the number of bytes that a particular instruction needs. And then in the next line here, we have a read statement where we're going to read the actual byte of machine code into this variable called byte. And our note here says, read a machine code byte into the variable byte. And then let's take a look at our next statement, which says poke memory comma byte. And our note says, save machine code byte to memory address. So this is simply going to poke that uh, value of machine code byte 
into memory at the location which is being uh, stored in the variable called memory. So we're going to read that machine code byte and then poke it into memory or store it into memory. And then in our next line here, line 170, we simply print that memory location onto the screen, followed by the contents of that memory location using this peek command here. We're going to peek memory. So we're going to peek into the contents of that memory location and then print that value to the screen, which should equal the value byte, since that's the value that we just poked into that memory location. But just to confirm, we actually have the correct value in there. We're going to take a peek into that memory location and print the value that's actually stored in that location. All right, now let's take a look at our next line 180. It says, if byte equals 201, then go to 1000. So it's going to check the value of the byte, the machine code byte that we stored in memory, and to check if it has a value of 201. So why do we want to check for a value of 201? Well, because the value 201, as you can see down here, corresponds to this return instruction. So we want to check if the program is finished, if it uh, encounters that return instruction. And if it does, it says if byte equals 201, then go to 1000. And so at line 1000, it's going to execute some other code, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But if the program isn't finished, meaning it hasn't encountered this 201 return instruction, then it's going to go here to line 190, which says let memory equal memory plus one. And the note says increment memory address. So we want to, of course, increment the memory address so we can store the next byte of data into the next memory location. And then we simply finish off our loop counter here at line 200 that says next F. So this uh, for next loop is going to loop however many times it takes to read all of the bytes of codes that are needed for that particular assembly language instruction. And those values will be poked or saved into memory and then printed on the screen. So after it finishes each instruction, it goes down here to line 210 and it prints this message, press a key for next instruction. And then we have another pause zero command where we wait for the user to press a key when they're ready to take a look at the next instruction. And then in line 230 here, we have a go to statement that just loops back up to line 100 right here, where we go ahead and read the next assembly language instruction, which is actually just a string of text. It's not actually an instruction that we're converting into machine code because of course, we're reading the actual machine code bytes that we entered manually into our data statement. But line 100 is where we start the loop over again to read the next instruction and the machine code bytes. And it keeps looping through the section of code until the program encounters this 201 return instruction where it goes to line 1000 here. So after all the bytes of the machine code program have been read and stored into memory, then what it does is it goes to line 1000 and it says press a key to execute the machine code program. And then we have another pause zero instruction to wait for the user to press a key. And here at line 1020 is where we actually execute our machine code program that has been stored into memory. And we do that using this randomize USR 40,000 instruction. Because remember 40,000 was the first address up here that we initialized into this memory variable, which is the beginning address where we're storing our machine code program. So now if we go back down, we can see this randomized user 40,000 instruction that's going to actually execute our program now in memory, which is what our note says here, execute machine code program stored at address 40,000. And then after the machine code program finishes executing, this return statement that we've put at the end here is going to return control of the computer back to basic. So it'll come back here to line 8999, where it will encounter this stop statement and our program will stop running. So let's go ahead and, well, we're not going to assemble this program, but since this is a basic loader program, all these values are going to get manually loaded into memory when it runs. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So if you watched the video where I described how to set up this uh, development environment, then you probably understand what I'm going to do now, which is I'm going to go to my command window right here, and then I'm going to execute a batch file, which will allow me to run my program in the C-Spec emulator. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And here we have the C-Spec emulator on the screen, and I'll just browse to my program, which is this one here at the bottom, myproject.bas. And let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. So there it says, press a key to load machine code program. So I'll press a key. And there it prints the instruction. This is the text that we put in our data statement, LDA comma two, that's our first instruction. And here we have another print statement that shows how many bytes are included in this instruction. In this case, it's two bytes, because remember we put this number two into our data statement as well. And then here it shows us the memory locations, 40,000 and 40,001. 
along with their contents, which are the actual machine code bytes of this program that correspond to this LDA comma two assembly language instruction. All right, so let's press a key and take a look at our next instruction. So this instruction says out 254 comma A, and it contains two bytes as well. And you can see those two bytes right here in address locations 40,002 and 40,003. And the values there are 211 and 254. And let's take a look at our next instruction. And finally, our last instruction is the return instruction at address 40,004 that has a machine code value of 201, which of course is that value that we were checking for in our basic program. And so now our basic program is ready to execute our machine code program, which it will do right now when I press a key. It says press any key to execute machine code. And since the purpose of this program is to change the border color to red, when I press a key, hopefully the border will change to red. So let's see what happens. There we go. The border changed to red. Our machine code program is working perfectly. And this is a very easy way that we can use BASIC to load a machine code program into memory and execute it as well. And it also familiarizes us with the assembly language instructions by forcing us to go and look up those instructions and look up the machine code bytes that correspond to those assembly language instructions. So that will familiarize us with the instructions, the number of bytes that it takes to convert that to machine code, as well as the actual bytes that are needed in order to convert that assembly language instruction into machine code. So of course you can play around with this program and create your own assembly language programs this way and you can experiment and see how you can familiarize yourself with the different instructions and the different codes. And if you want, you could even modify this basic program to perform other actions based on what the machine code program is doing. So you don't just have to run the machine code uh, program by itself. If you want, you can have different machine code programs that contain different bytes that do different things, and you can intermix them with your basic program in this way. So there we have a simple basic loader program we can use to create our assembly language or machine code programs for the Z80 microprocessor and run it on a Sinclair Spectrum computer or the ZX Spectrum Next computer, whatever you like. And if you want, you can go ahead and modify this program and play around with it and see what else you can do. And for any of you who might want to type in the program, I'll include it in the program description down below so you can check it out there if you like or you can check it out on my Facebook group for the Sprite Works Patreon subscribers. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.